Okay, dough's been sitting for about 30 minutes. So now I just kind of ball it up, check for any hot spots, which is just like where maybe it's a little bit drier and squeeze a little. And then I'll leave this here, sit for about 20 more minutes. Okay, now we're gonna stretch and fold the dough or my version of it anyway. Everyone does this process a little bit different and this has sort of been an evolution for me. And so uh, this is what I have found that works and I really like it. Uh, but this is not a traditional way. So I just kind of hold it up and let gravity sort of pull at the dough and I work my way around kind of in a circular motion. And like I said, not traditional, but this sort of has evolved and works great for me now and it just kind of starts getting bigger. Now you don't want to break the dough, so if it starts to split, put it back down in the bowl to support it a little bit. But I do that once or twice around, and then I just kind of fold it right back up. And you can put it back in for another 20 minutes, perform another stretch and fold. Okay, the second stretch and fold, you'll notice that the dough is starting to get a little bit tighter. Okay, I just finished my second stretch and fold. I'm just gonna kind of fold it under itself, make it into like a little ball. <clears throat> and now it's ready for the bulk ferment, so I'm gonna cover this in plastic and I usually put mine in my laundry room uh, because it's the warmest room in the house and so it kind of speeds along the process uh, of the bulk ferment. I do usually a minimum of eight hours. Some people do as little as four hours, um, but I like to um, get rid of a lot of the gluten in it and that's what happens dur during the bulk ferment among other things. And so you can do up to 24 hours or 48 really, but. Um, I find that my bread doesn't turn out as great. So I do eight to 12 hours typically.